Uh, so we've got the, the we just pr produced the aces from a previous routine, mm -hmm. and uh, traditionally with all these uh, routines, you place three cards on each ace. So three cards go on each one. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, um, I will try try and do this slower than I kind of normally work. But uh, mm. the ace of spades. What's the ace of spades here? You see, the magic has now happened because the ace of spades has. Vanished. No, no, no. It's no longer no. there. It really vanished. has vanished. Good, oh, I'll, I'll do it again. Look, with the Ace of Hearts. Watch the Ace of Hearts. The Ace of Hearts should, I'm hoping, to go through the fist that one, yeah. and that's vanished. And that really has gone. No Ace of Hearts whatsoever. I can do it again um, mm. with the Ace of Clubs. Yeah. Watch the Ace of Clubs. I'm going to try and make the Ace of Clubs vanish. So I think. Yeah, it's gone. Has it gone? It's yeah, gone. It's, gone. it's gone. So it really has gone no ace of clubs whatsoever uh, that leaves one more to go which is down here the ace of diamonds so what's the ace of diamonds i'm hoping we could do this again for the last time and look mm. the ace of diamonds has vanished and it really has vanished no ace of diamonds so there's all the aces have basically vanished Vanish, yeah but you see if i'm a good magician i should be able to try and make them reappear mm -hmm. now uh, my favorite one is the ace of diamonds i'm going to work with the ace of diamonds here okay. t-h-e the a-c-e-o-f Diamonds, D I A M O N D, and that should be the Ace of Diamonds. Ace of diamonds yeah. oh. So I can go further than that because I want to get the other aces. All I have to do is that, and there they are. Isn't that, isn't that a lovely routine? Brilliant, Paul. Oh, thank you. Lovely. Yeah. Now, let me tell you about uh, John Quincy Andrews. Um, he was playing this game of cards, and uh, after shuffling the deck a few times, the hand he actually received was the one I'm telling you about. It was the famous hand, which is the King of Clubs. Five of Hearts, the Ten of Clubs, the Jack of Diamonds, and the Ten of Hearts. And to be quite frank, that's not a great hand. Not a great hand at all. A King of Five, a Ten, a Jack, and a Ten. So, in the true parlance of the game, he removed one of his cards, and he took one from the deck. But in just exchanging one card, he ended up with a Black Jack, a Red Ten, a Black Ten, a Red Jack, another black jack that is a full house he was just about to uh, play his hand they said well hang on a second hang on a second in muleshoe you have to draw twice he thought that's very odd so he went through his cards he took out another one and exchanged it for one from the top of the deck but in just doing that he ended up with a red jack so a red jack is good he ended up with a black jack he ended up with a black king he ended up with another black jack and another red jack that is fours, four jacks over a red king. He was just about to play the game. They said, look, this is Thursdays, and the mule shoe on Thursdays, you have to discard two cards. So quite angrily, he just took one from the top of his uh, hand, took one from the deck, but in just doing that, being a good sleight of hand artist that he was, he managed to get himself the ten of clubs. He got himself the jack of clubs, the queen of clubs, the king of clubs, the ace of clubs, and he is the guy who took all the money out of mule shoe. Oh, hello folks, it's uh, Paul Gordon here, and uh, this is, uh, that is possible, and it's from uh, Card Startlers, and uh, it's based on an old routine of mine called That's Not Possible, from originally uh, Gold Dust Companion in 2003, and then in uh, Gold, Gold Dust itself in uh, 2012. Now, um, the story is about uh, Wild Bill Hickok and the Dead Man's Hand. If you know that, it's Black uh, Aces over Black Eights. And I'm going to form two hands, one for me and one for you. So I need from the deck the um, eights, and uh, I also need from the deck the uh, aces. So, well, let me do it here. okay. So the aces and the eights. So I'm going to form two hands of cards. So, uh, like I just said, I've got uh, the eights and also the aces, and I'm going to form two hands. So, yeah, just four cards for this. We don't need all five for this hand of poker. So, um, an eight for you, an ace for you, an eight for you, and an ace for you, and then the two aces and the two eights for me. Now, there's a problem here, and you might have noticed this, because the dead man's hand should actually be black eights over, uh, black aces over black eights, but I've got a, a red eight and a black eight, a red ace and a black eight. But let's do some magic. Did you see the magic? I now should have the correct hand here, and I've now, oh, in actual fact, over here, I've now got all four eights. If I've got all four eights over here, 
you should have the four aces. Well, <clears throat> you got one ace, black ace, but you've actually managed to get yourself a raw flush and poker, and that beats everything. Hello folks, it's Paul Gordon here, and it's 52 years ago this summer that uh, the family and myself, we went to the Isle of Wight, uh, south coast of England, the Isle of Wight, to see the pop festival, the famous pop festival. And uh, in the fairground and the fates and the side of the rock shows, there used to be these three card, four card Monty guys. And I used to go and watch these guys, they were really clever. And uh, one of them, he, he did, did this thing with four jacks, he had four playing cards, and I thought I'd go and have a look. I was only very young, but do you want to see what happened? Let me show you, come down here. So he showed me um, the four jacks. He says, this one here, the jack of hearts, second from, second from face, is the money card. That's the one to keep an eye on. He said, where is it? I said, well, that's easy, second from face. He said, look, if I turn the cards face down and reverse the order, where does that bring the jack of hearts? I said, well, second from top, obviously. He said, no, no, you're not watching, son. It's actually on the bottom. He said, I'll do it again. Watch the jack of hearts. He said, I'll reverse the order. Where does that bring the jack of hearts? I said, to top. Well, he obviously wanted me to win because he showed me it was on top. He said, look, if I leave it on the table, do you, put, do you want to put money on it? I said, yes, and I did, and I lost because that was the Jack of Diamonds. The Jack of Hearts was over here. Look, he said, I'll put the Jack of Hearts on the bottom and I'll bury it into the centre. Where is it? And I said, well, I think second from bottom. He said, no, you've lost a game because the Jack of Hearts is on top. He said, do you want to put money on it? I said, yes, and I did, and I lost a game because that was the Jack of Clubs. The Jack of Hearts was over here. He said, look, I'll leave the Jack of Hearts face up in the packet, and it really was face up in the packet. He said, do you want to put it, money on it being face up in the packet? I said, yes, and I did, and I lost because the one that was face up was the Jack of Spades. He said, so look, watch very closely. I've got four face down jacks, correct? I said, yes, he said, you're wrong. He said, the Jack of Hearts is face up, second from bottom. He said, by the way, son, it should be easy to follow. I said, why is that? He said, because A, it's face up, B, it's the only one with an odd colour back, and it's the only one with a bloody great hole in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't be bothered to put a suit on today, which is rather a shame, really, honestly. Um, now, I'm going to use uh, the four kings from the deck. The, the four kings, in a very strange fashion, will represent cannibals. Oh, yeah. In the deepest parts of, uh, let's say, Africa, somewhere mm. like that. And... Um, so they will represent, I want the camera to see that. So they represent the four four cannibals, okay? Now I'll leave them here for just a moment. Now I'm gonna ask you, from the deck, you can either choose three cards or we can just name any three cards. So just name any three spot cards. Okay, me. eight of clubs. Eight of clubs. Um, six of hearts. Six of hearts. And the five of spades. Five of spades. Mm -hmm. And it, it really doesn't matter which cards you choose, but uh, there we are. Now, uh, the these cards represent missionaries. Oh, yeah, missionaries. And the missionaries go into the jungle. And these are the cannibals. They're the cannibals. Oh, yeah. The missionaries go into the jungle and they get caught by the cannibals, which is a rather painful experience in itself. Oh, Have you ever been caught by the cannibals? Not lately. Not yeah. lately. <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> it does itch. Yes. It? So don't forget, um, I've got the, um, the four cannibals four here yeah. and then the four missionaries here. Now, watch what happens. The first missionary gets caught by the cannibals. Mm -hmm. and gets eaten oh. and she has gone very nice Paul. okay let's do it again the second missionary gets caught by the cannibals takes a second but she too gets eaten mm. gone and the same with the third one the third missionary gets eaten by the cannibals very nice. that's magical isn't it yeah, but does um, or do they get eaten or do they just make their escape because they're not there but actually the the pack of cards represents a hotel, and uh, that's the first floor, that's the second floor, and that's the third floor, which is exactly where the missionaries went back to. Ah, very good. Excellent. Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I've always to do that, I actually use the ace, two, three, and four of spades. There's a three, there's the two, there's the ace, and there's the four. Now, traditionally speaking, in any of these kind of routines, the ace of spades is the leader. Now, the reason for that is this. It's the brand name, it's the copyright name, but mostly it's the most ornate card in the deck. Now, if I compare that to, say, the uh, two of spades, you can see the big difference in style there. It really is very pretty indeed. Now, what that means is that one by one, these four cards, the ace, two, three, and four of spades, are going to turn face up in the packet one by one, culminating the ace of spades. But you have to push the central portion for it to happen. If I do that, there is the four of spades, that's the first one. Let's do that again. If I push the central portion here, I now get the three of spades. 
that's the four of spades and the three of spades. It's just the thinness of a playing card that always happens as well. Let's try it again. So remember, we got four face down cards. Here we go. Here's the two of spades. Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't push the central portion there. If I do that, there is the two of spades. That's the two of spades. Now that leaves one more to go, and that is the ace of spades. And all I have to do is that. In fact, I'm going to change procedures on you, because if you prefer the original, I can do that. That uses the ace of clubs, the ace of hearts, the ace of diamonds, and the ace of spades. And that is magic. We don't have a spectator here. Ideally, if we did, I'd ask the spectator to choose a card. So let's assume somebody's here and I'll ask them to take any card they want. Let's assume they take that one there. And by the way, folks, this can be done standing. The table is not required. So can you remember the card? Have a good look at it. Now, I'm going to do something unusual here. I'm going to mix the cards in an unusual fashion. And the unusual fashion is this. I'm going to mix them face up into face down. Face up into face down the handling because those cards really are face down into face up cards now you can see the situation here backs to backs faces to faces watch very closely all I have to do is this and all the cards are now face up except for one card in the center and that card is your chosen three of diamonds you know folks I want to tell you about unlucky George I mean this is an old friend of mine and boy, was he unlucky. He was a card player, poker player. He was also a card cheat. He was pretty good at it, but uh, on one occasion, I think he just went a, a step too far. Let me show you what I mean by that. Um, he's playing this game of cards. I think it was in the back, uh, back street pub or something like that. He'd never made it to Vegas, uh, could never do that. Um, but he was playing this game of cards and uh, he was cheating. And uh, he played five, he was five people, so he played a hand of cards. and. He wanted to get himself a good hand, and I know for a fact that he went for uh, four tens, and he got them. He got four tens. That's <laughs> pretty good handling. Uh, later on, he played again. He played a, a second hand. Um, he became the dealer again. He gave the card a shuffle, as you always have to do, and uh, this time, I think he went for a. I think he went for a royal flush. So let me just have a look here. So. Played the game of cards, he, he did the dealing, the cheat that he was, and uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, he got himself a Royal Flush in clubs. So he's, he's pretty good at this racket, uh, but um, you know, like I said to you beforehand, I think he had gone a stage too far. He then realized that to be a good cheat, you have to um, have a partner. And so his partner in this particular occasion was the third guy here, um, another unlucky fella. And he decided to give him a good hand. So again, played the game. And uh, this time, I think he was going to give his partner, um, if I remember correctly, I think it was queens. Um, let's have a look here. Yeah, it was the four queens. So again, that's good. But, you know, he's the one who wanted to win. And he got himself the aces. And there, uh, four aces. So he's good at this racket. Um, again, later on, it came to the last deal. And it was him again. It was his, his, his turn to uh, do the deal. So, gave the cards a cut, gave the cards a couple of shuffles, and this time he decided to uh, give his partner, I think he gave his partner um, a, fla a flush, I think it was that, not too sure. So he dealt the cards, and don't forget his partner's in the third position here, and his partner got, yeah, he got the Royal Flush in spades, which is it's absolutely incredible, that really is very good. But like I told you, he was unlucky. It was a bad cheat as well because he decided to get himself cards that could actually beat that because as we know jokers are wild but in his deck he had five jokers and that's impossible it was at that moment that he shot him hi folks it's paul gordon and i'd like to show you how how the card cheats cheat in places like uh, las vegas now i'm shuffling the cards like we do in england in fact how most people do in in uh, europe because in uh, America, or should I say the Americas, they give the cards a, a riffle shuffle. Now, it's normally done on the table, but I'll do it in the hand so you can see how good a shuffle this really is. And that is a thorough shuffle. Now, I'm gonna try and deal the aces to myself in a hand of poker. And the first thing to notice is, there's no aces anywhere near the bottom of the deck, and there's no aces anywhere near the top. If there were, I'd lose them. 
Um, and now I've done that, by the way, I suppose I'll just give another shuffle just to keep uh, me honest, as it were. I'll give the cards one more shuffle, and I think that is fair. Now, of course, if you're going to do that, by the way, the other thing you have to always do is after shuffling the cards is to give them a cut. And I'm going to give the cards a cut. Dead centre. Now I'm going to deal four hands of poker. One, two, three. This is for me, and I get the ace of spades. I'll do it again. One, two, three. I get the ace of hearts. I'll do it again. Look, I get the ace of clubs. And then one last time, I get the ace of diamonds. So I've managed to get myself all four aces. But you see, if you do that in a game of cards, um, there's a problem because you need to make sure that you have a partner. And so the partner is the person who gets the uh, who gets the good hand. So I'm going to assume we've got a game of uh, five people playing here, uh, and my partner is the third person. Now the first thing I'm going to do is openly lose the aces for you, so you can see them getting lost. So there's the ace of spades. It gets lost into the deck. And just to make sure, you can see there's no aces anywhere near the bottom. Again, if there were, I'd lose them. I'll get rid of the ace of hearts as well. Look, I'll lose it. It gets lost right into the deck. And just to make sure there really are no aces anywhere near the bottom there. If there were, again, I'd lose them. And of course, there's no aces anywhere near the top either. Look, I'll lose the ace of clubs. One by one, these aces get lost into the deck. Again, no aces near the bottom. Again, if there were, I'd lose them. And finally, the ace of diamonds. It really does get lost into the deck. And of course, there's no aces anywhere near the bottom. Now, I'm going to try now and deal five hands of poker. The third person, my partner in crime, will get the aces. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Well, that's not an ace yet. One, two, three, ace of diamonds, four, five. One, two, three, ace of clubs, four, five. One, two, three, ace of hearts, four, five. And then he gets the last eight. Oh, he gets the five of clubs. Well, actually, I didn't give him all four aces, because to be quite frank, sometimes if you get a partner in crime, you can't always trust them. So it's a good idea for yourself always to make sure that you get an ace, and I've got the ace of spades. And the reason I've dealt myself the ace of spades is because, well, I'm gonna win the game because I've actually managed to get myself a raw flush in poker, and that can't be beaten. Anyway, enough of this ribald banter. <laughs> Shares your version. I'll show you my version. Yeah. Of course it uses the uh, kings. I hope you can see this, Lloyd. Um, we've got Lloyd on camera one. Uh, the four kings, king of clubs, hearts, spades and diamonds. Now the kings are going to turn face down in the packet. Now, the first one has already turned face down. You probably didn't see it, but there it is. Look at that. Now to get the second one to turn face down, that's easy. Do you see that? <laughs> that was supposed no, to be a gag, but nobody ever laughs at that. But in actual fact, they've all suddenly turned face down. But I can get them to turn face up, one by one. If I do that, there is the king of clubs. That's the first one. I'll do it again for you. Hearts next, king of hearts. Look, there's the heart. I'll do it again. The next one is the king of spades. There's the king of spades. Um, the diamonds is the hardest. Yes. Now the diamonds is on the bottom of the packet here. So the diamonds, which is now on top, can do something else. If I shake the packet, they all suddenly turn face up. Now, there's also an observation test. Do you remember the colour of the backs? What were they, Lloyd? They were blue. Blue, I thought so. Well, you're not watching, are you? Because they're actually red. There's <laughs> one, two, three, four. Oh. But if you prefer green, like the colour of your mat, I can do green as well. And that is a fuller. Oh, that's excellent. That's brilliant. Right, right. Uh, that startling twist. Yeah, that would have fooled up. I think Mr Vernon himself might have been fooled by that. Thank you. Here's a second handling of an old routine of mine. This is a, a bit different. I hope you enjoy it. Watch this. Uh, it uses the four kings. One, two, three, four. And I'll leave those in a row here. One, two, three, and four. It also uses the four queens. One, two, three, four. And I'll leave those in a row. One, two, three, and four. So there's a king and a queen, king and a queen, king and a queen, king and a queen. I'll put these two uh, pairs together and uh, here we've got king and a queen goes for that king and a queen. But if I do this, suddenly over here I've got all the kings. And if I've got all the kings here, I must have the queens down there. Well, actually, I've just done a double bluff on you because over here I've got the four queens. <laughs> and over here 
Four kings? No, you're wrong. I've actually got the four aces. Hi folks, it's Paul Gordon and this is How on Earth and this will show you how to cheat at cards. Well, kind of. Come down here. Um, I'll use the four jacks for this uh, and um, I'm going to try and show you how to switch cards. So the jack of clubs, the jack of hearts, the jack of spades and the jack of diamonds which I shall leave right here. I also need four spot cards from the deck and I'll use, yeah, I'll use these ones here. So, four black spot cards, um, one, two, three, and four. Now, if I tap the back of the jack packet, I should be able to switch in over here a jack, well I have. Let's do it again, tap the back again, I got myself the second jack. If I tap the packet twice, I get the remaining two jacks. So that's very magical, very fast. But I can switch back the process and get myself the four spot cards here. If I've got the four spot cards here, down here, I must have the jacks. Well, there's one of them. In fact, I've got ten, jack, queen, king, ace. That is a raw flush in poker, and I can't be beaten.